Imagine knowing exactly what is working on your website and what is not, without getting lost in the weeds trying to track a million different statistics. Well, today I'm going to walk you through the five best ways to measure your website success. Not only are these statistics easy to track, they'll tell you precisely where things are breaking down so you know what you need to fix. In this video, you're going to learn what really matters when it comes to your website success, how to know if your site is actually doing its job, and simple changes that can boost your website's performance. So let's say you run a restaurant. You put a lot of effort into making the space look incredible. It's busy, lots of people are coming in, the food is great, but no one's actually ordering anything. It's kind of like your website. It might look good, it might get traffic, and you deliver a great service. But if those visitors are not converting into leads and clients, your site is not really doing what you built it to do. A successful website is not just about traffic, it's about results. So let's talk about how you can start measuring what really matters and filter out all the extra stuff that doesn't move the needle. Here are the five website statistics I would focus on. First, overall traffic to your site. Are you getting any traffic to your site? If so, how much? If no one's showing up, even a textbook perfect website is not going to get your results. To measure website traffic, you can install Google Analytics onto your site, or you can use a third-party tool like Clicky, which I've been using for over 10 years, and in my opinion is much more user-friendly than Google Analytics. If you notice your traffic is low or stagnant, it might be time to work on your SEO or consider running some paid ad campaigns to get more eyeballs onto your site. The second statistic I would focus on is traffic to your money pages. Not all pages on your site are created equal. Your money pages, like your lead magnet opt-in page and free consultation request page, are where the magic happens. These pages are critical touch points where visitors either become leads or clients. If people are not landing on these pages, your site's not working as it should. And once again, you can measure the traffic to your money pages using Google Analytics or a tool like Clicky. If your money pages are not getting much love, you could think about promoting them more on social media, adjusting the internal linking on your website, featuring these money pages more prominently on your homepage, or running paid ads directly to these pages. Also, just getting more overall traffic to your site will most likely get more traffic to your money pages. Think of it like turning up the volume on your whole system. When you boost overall traffic to your site, your money pages will naturally get more attention too. Statistic number three to monitor is the conversion rate of your landing page. To avoid any miscommunication, I'm defining a landing page as the page where you capture leads by offering some type of lead magnet like a free webinar or free video, or free download or whatever. A good conversion rate on your landing page means your message is resonating and visitors are taking action by opting into your lead magnet. To calculate the conversion rate of your landing page, you don't need anything fancy or complicated. You just need to tally up the total number of opt-ins for your lead magnet and divide that number by the total traffic to your landing page. So if last month you got 37 new email subscribers and the total traffic to your landing page was 176 visitors, well then your conversion rate would be 21%, which in most cases would be considered pretty decent. If your conversion rate isn't where you want it to be, then you'll need to make some adjustments. That means experiment with different headlines, adjust your offer, simplify your form, perhaps even try a different lead magnet altogether. This would also be a great time to do some A-B testing so you can see with actual data what's really moving the needle. The fourth statistic to monitor is conversion rate of your free consultation request page. If your free consultation request page is not converting, it could be a sign that something's off. Maybe it's the copy, maybe it's the layout, or even the number of questions you're asking on the form. It could also mean that your service offering isn't resonating with prospective clients anymore. A low conversion rate on your free consultation request page is a warning sign that you might be missing out on some potential clients. To measure the conversion rate on this page, use the same formula as with your landing page. Take the total number of free consultation requests and divide it by the total number of visitors to this page. To improve the conversion rate, apply similar strategies as you would for your landing page. Test different headlines, different copy, different page layouts, or add trust elements like testimonials. You could adjust the questions on your free consultation form or even experiment with a different service offering altogether. Then statistic number five to monitor is the number of leads generated. At the end of the day, lead volume is what keeps your business growing. If your conversion rates are solid, but you're still not getting enough leads, it can mean you simply aren't getting enough traffic to your site. And when I say leads, I'm talking about people who have taken a clear action on your site, like opting into your lead magnet or requesting a free consultation. Both types of leads are valid, they're just in different stages of your sales funnel. 
So if you're not seeing enough leads and your traffic is low, well, it's time to focus on bringing more visitors to your website, either through better SEO, running paid ads, or amplifying your presence on social media. However, if your traffic volume is good, but leads are still down, then it's a conversion rate optimization issue. You want to revisit what I covered a few moments ago about improving conversion rates on your money pages. Focusing on these five key website metrics will give you a clear picture of how your website's performing, and more importantly, what you can do to improve it. And sure, there are other metrics that might be interesting, but most end up being just noise. The key is to zero in on what really matters so you can make changes that truly move the needle. And if you want to take your website performance to the next level, make sure to check out this next video where I reveal eight common elements you should remove from your website immediately because they could be sabotaging your site's success. You can watch it right here.